Year eight, welcome back to Edgar Allan Poe and the Gothic horror texts. We're going to start a new story today from Poe. It's called The Black Cats. So if you like cats, you'll be able to see one shortly and then read about one. Um, before we begin, let's do a touch of revision. A while ago, you would have learned the word duplicitous. You may remember that duplicitous means two-faced or deceitful, but in what way was Lady Macbeth duplicitous? Let's have a think, Lady Macbeth. Macbeth's anxious or ambitious, then later anxious wife. But when she was in the non-anxious phase, she was pretty duplicitous, but in what way? Well, at dinner with Macbeth, she tried to persuade her guests that Macbeth wasn't having a fit of guilt. It was just because he was having a, one of his childhood fits, if you like. It was nothing to do with his guilt over murdering the king. That's one way she, through duplicity, presented a public face of elegance when really she was involved in an assassination gesticulation then more recent remember this word gesticulation a bit similar to gesture what's well, gesticulation drama it's body language it's movement but what does gesticulation did the narrator demonstrate when during the police interview he thought he could hear the old man's heart beating we read a story recently didn't we about a man who was killed because his eye disturbs the narrator. Then he was buried under the floorboards. And you may remember that the, the narrator waved a chair around his head, tried to make noise to drown out the sound of the, this imaginary heartbeat. Today, you need to know what a disposition is and actually about a billion other words, but let's look at dis disposition first. It is a person's quality of mind or character. So please write this down. Disposition means quality of mind. Um, you might know play Hamlet. He has an antique disposition, which means a mad state of mind. He says, so how does alcohol pe help people who have a nervous disposition? If you're nervous, how does alcohol help people? Probably too young to know, but it. Well, that's your uh, that's your question to. Well, it might help calm people down, give people a certain um, um, sense of confidence, or um, a certain flow with their their jokes, that sort of thing. Um, basically, calm their nerves. And if someone is drunk, what gesticulation would you expect to see in them? So have you ever seen anyone who's had a lot to drink, a lot of alcohol to drink? Um, or how do they behave? What body language do they um, exhibit? Perhaps a bit aggressive, a bit forward, a bit, a bit wild. It's up to you. Uh, why am I talking about alcohol? Well, Edgar Allan Poe loved the stuff, and I need to tell you all about his drinking habit before we start reading the story. Uh, so we're going to summarise the story, read some of it, not all, be reminded of Edgar Allan Poe and his extraordinary way of writing, uh, and then write a little paragraph about how insanity is presented in the story. So we're going to start reading it this week. We'll finish it next week. And next week, I think it's a half week. Is it a half week? I think so. And I'll be inviting you to use what you know about Edgar Allan Poe to write your Gothic story. I've been thinking of my own over the past few days, my Poe style story. So um, I'm going to summarize the story first. Basically, yeah, the narrator um, loves cats. He and his wife uh, own a cat. They um, they uh, but the cat um, 
starts to uh, become a problem for the narrator. He he gets drunk one night and uh, attacks the cat for some reason. He um, gouges out the cat's eyeball. So he gouges out the cat's eye and feels guilty about it. So on the middle of the top line, you see a tree. The cat runs away from him every time he sees the narrator out of fear and panic. Narrator feels guilty, but then the narrator starts to feel a bit irritated by the sight of the eye. You can see links between the telltale heart already. It's to do with eyeballs and um, and violence, and also this nagging sense of guilt that returns to haunt the narrator. So why is the tree there? Well, the narrator hangs the cat. Um, it's a gothic story. It's, it's full of the macabre. We know Edgar Allan Poe writes about the gothic and the macabre. He hangs the cat in the back garden. Out of, uh, um, he suspends it from a tree. Mysteriously that night, his house catches fire and three out of the four walls burn down. Um, when he wakes up in the morning, there's a symbol on the wall, the one remaining wall. It's a hollow wall. It's been recently plastered. The fact that the wall is hollow is significant later. But there's a mysterious symbol on the wall. The neighbours point out that there's a giant image of a cat and a noose on the wall. The writer tries to explain it as uh, the reaction of ammonia from the hanged cat that was crushed by the stage by one of the falling walls, acting with the paintwork and creating a symbol. He explains it logically. Now, the narrator returns to the pubs, meets a cat in the pub that looks just like his black cat, Pluto. Not the same cat, but it was, it's one that looks just the same. The only difference being a white symbol on its chest. So perhaps out of guilt, the narrator takes the cat home, but then soon becomes irritated that this cat follows him around follows him downstairs, jumps into his arms and claws at him in slight, a slightly painful way, tries to trip him over. And one day, again, when drunk, the narrator tries to attack the cat. Oh, by this stage, the symbol on his chest has turned into a gallows, which means the apparatus that you use to hang people. And you suspend a noose from a gallows. It's like a frame. From, where, from which people were hanged. Uh, as you may remember from the Crucible, the end of the Crucible. Uh, so you see a picture of the narrator at the bottom, well, someone I found from Google, trying to attack the cat. His wife stops him from attacking the cat because she's a cat lover. He turns his rage onto her and destroys his wife instead, um, quickly buries her conceals her within the hollow wall, bricks up the wall. You remember that in the Telltale Heart, the narrator hides the, the old man under the floorboards. Again, it's another similarity. Um, but when the police come to investigate, well, we'll talk about that next week, I think, because we aren't reading all of the story today. Have a look at these words. I'm just going to flash through them because it's... The, the group several unfamiliar words in the text, and I thought I'd share these with you so to make it less uh, less taxing. So unburthen, similar to unburden, remove a load, conspicuous and clearly visible, docility, um, docile or easily handled, dozy in other words, humanity, having a, a low view of one's importance, okay? disposition, quality of mind as we've I think we've looked at that just now sagacious means wise gratification pleasure gained gossamer something very thin um like tights or stockings cobweb oh, that should say cobweb cobweb thin material fidelity means faithfulness to a person tinctured tinge with a bit of now the cat's name is Pluto but Pluto is also the Roman god of the underworld the fiend intemperance means the demon drink basically the fiend is a demon um intemperance means you don't have temper you don't have control over yourself basically intemperance means um 
drink, drinking, peevish, irritable, partiality, a bias, unfair, unfair bias towards something. Loathsome means hateful or causing hatred. Uh, intoxicated means he's drunk. Malevolence, hostility, debauch, another word for drunkenness. You can see a pattern emerging. Incarnate, for the devil incarnate would mean the devil in the flesh. Um, and vile means extremely unpleasant. So really, it's a, uh, you can understand some of the themes that are emerging. Drink, um, madness, mad disposition, and something devilish as well. The god of the underworld, unpleasant things, um, loathsome things that you hate. Now, when you are writing in an English exam, let me explain that to be successful, and this is so that you aren't bored by all of this historical stuff, this background, uh, you need to not only present an opinion and select examples, but you also have to analyse language. So refer to um, text as metaphorical or symbolic or similes or verbs. You have to language the uh, analyze form and structure as well. So what punctuation is used, what details are presented in what order and why. And finally, it's very good if you, you get much better marks if you know something about the writer or the historical context within which the work was written. So either about the writer and his, basically about the writer and his life. So um, you're measured on those three things usually. Sometimes you aren't measured on the third thing. But it's good to get into the habit of finding out about the man before you read his story. So um, drink, drinking ran in the family of Ed Crown and Poe. Henry, he wrote, is entirely given up to drink. Oh, what an awful spelling mistake. And unable to help himself. Um, some days... And then he says of himself, some days after excess, I was invariably confined to bed. So this picture is emerging of Edgar Allan Poe liking drink, liking to get drunk and liking to lose control. He was not, he was not only a writer, but a literary critic as well. But he wasn't able to make it to work sometime because he was so drunk. Uh, drinking, gambling and even pistol fires became, com became common problems at university and the U university of virginia and he could basically down an entire glass of alcohol in a single gulp uh he started boozing when he went to military school i did give way he says to the spirit of southern conviviality conviviality means um, jolliness or um liveliness merriness basically drinking drunkenness um a friend of his or someone who knew him, reports seeing Edgar Allan Poe struggling to raise himself from the gutter one night as I was passing along the street. He was shocked. He was astonished to see it was Mr. Poe. Uh, and then a letter from Lambert Wilmer to John Tomlinson says, uh, I fear he's going headlong to destruction, moral, physical and intellectual. He drank a lot because his wife was ill for about five years before she died, his wife, his young wife, Virginia. Um, Poe realises that he was so drunk and outrageous, and he wrote a letter apologising, asking his friends to apologise to Mr Fuller, Fuller for making such a fool of myself in his house. Uh, Edgar Poe was drunk on um, port, which is like strong wine, and he washed it down with rummy coffee, which is, um, you know, coffee, and rum together basically loved to drink and he spoiled his job prospects he was fired from one magazine because he misses let he missed lectures he didn't turn up arrived at work late couldn't uh, deliver lectures on the poems that he was supposed to criticize uh and i mentioned that his wife was ill for five years and basically this theme of love and loss and alcoholism reflects Edgar Poe's life. So when we're writing, we need to reflect something of this, um, something of his um, alcoholism to get more marks. The Black Cat has a strong autobiographical thread running through it. Um, 
before we yeah before we remind ourselves of Edgar Allan Poe, let's start reading the story. So I'm going to try and jump out of Teams. So I'm going to stop sharing that and share something else. OK, so we should be in the Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. We'll start reading. We'll highlight a few quotations that we could use to answer the question. How does the writer present insanity? Basically the same question as last week with a different story. So he begins for the most wild yet most homely narrative, which I'm about to pen. I neither expect nor solicit belief. Mad indeed would I be expect would I be to expect it in case where my very senses rejected their own evidence. Yet mad I'm not. And very surely do I not dream. But tomorrow I die, and today I would unburden my soul. Remember, unburden means I'm lighten. So he's confessing everything. My intimate, my immediate purpose is to place before the world plainly, succinctly, without without comment, a series of mere household events. In their consequences, these, these events have terrified, have tortured, have destroyed me. Yet I will not attempt to expound them. To me, they have presented little but horror. To many, they will seem less terrible than Baroque's, which is an old form of theatre. Hereafter, perhaps some intellect may be found which will reduce my phantasm to the commonplace. Phantasm is a ghost. Some intellect more ca calm, more logical, far less exciable than my own, which will perceive in the circumstances I detail with awe, nothing more than an ordinary succession of very natural causes and effects. Let's look at this little technique here. It's called parallelism, which means the repetition with a slight change. Have, 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 have terrified, have tortured, have destroyed. So um, parallelism. Parallelism reflects a range of feelings. He's been terrified, he's been destroyed, he's he's felt tortured as well. And the caesura, do we remember what caesura means at all? Caesura means a pause in a text, as uh, demonstrated by those dashes. Parallelism, parallel, parallelism reflects a range of feelings, and the caesura suggests a troubled memory. He's having difficulty getting out the word three. His memory is troubled. From my infancy, line 11, from my infancy, I was noted for the docility and humanity of my disposition. So he is a calm person. My tenderness of heart was even so conspicuous as to make me the jest of my companions. So people laughed at him for being so tame. I was especially fond of animals. And I was indulged by my parents with a great variety of pets. With these, I spent most of my time and was never so, never was so happy as when feeding and caressing them. This peculiarity of character grew with my growth, and in my manhood, I derived from it one of my principal sources of pleasure. To those who have cherished an affection for a faithful and sagacious dog, I need hardly be at the trouble of explaining the nature or the intensity of the gratification thus derivable. There is something in the unselfish and self-sacrificing love of a brute, which goes directly to the heart of him who has had frequent occasion to test the paltry friendship and gossamer fidelity of mere man. Poe uses these extremely long sentences, but basically he's saying he trusts animals more than men. Men have a gossamer fidelity, a thin loyalty. I married early and was happy to find in my wife a disposition not congenial with my own. Now, this reflects Poe's own marriage. Observing my partiality for domestic pets, she lost no opportunity of procuring, buying those of the most agreeable, agreeable kind. We had birds, goldfish, fine dog, rabbits, small monkey, and a cat. This latter, meaning the last in the list, was a remarkably large and beautiful animal, entirely black and sagacious to an astonishing degree. In speaking of his intelligence, sagacious means wise, uh, in speaking of his intelligence, my wife, who at heart was not a little tinctured with superstition, so she's slightly tinctured, she's slightly superstitious. So here Poe introduces this gothic idea of a black cat. She made frequent allusion to the ancient popular notion which regarded all black cats as witches in disguise. Let's highlight this actually and say it is introducing gothic. Um, 
insert comment. Remember, we have to write about structure as well. So here we can say at this point, the writer focuses on the Gothic. Not that she is ever serious upon this point, and I mention the latter at all for no better reason than it happens just now to be remembered. Um, the cat's name is Pluto. So Pluto, this, this was the cat's name, was my favorite pet and playmate. Remember what Pluto means, who Pluto is? He's the Roman god of the underworld. Pluto. I alone fed him and he attended me wherever I went about the house. It was even with difficulty that I could prevent him from following me through the streets. Our friendship lasted in this manner for several years, during which my general temperament and character through the instrumentality of the fiend and temperance had, I blush to confess it, experienced a radial, a radical alteration for the worse. Remember what his friends said uh, about Poe, Poe's friends said about him. He was, he suffered a, a decline because of alcohol. Um, so let's highlight this entire, highlight with me, by the way, as we're going along. This entire line reflects Poe's own reflect Poe's own um, proclivity uh, habit, alcoholic habits. Habit. Habit. Have it yet. Basically, he drank so much that he did embarrassing things I, that he blushes about in his letters and so on. I grew day by day more moody, more irritable, more regardless of the feelings of others. I suffered myself to use intemperate language to my wife. At, at length, I even offered her personal violence. So is Poe saying that he is using this story as an allegory for his own life? Is he using this? Is this story reflecting the writer's own guilt. Let's record this thought. Poe reflecting, uh, using his story to reflect on his own his own guilt and his own marriage. At length, uh, yes, so he was violent towards his wife. My pets, of course, were made to feel the change in my disposition. I not only neglected, but ill-used them, so he was violent towards his animals as well. For Pluto, however, I still retained sufficient regard to restrain myself from maltreating him, as I made no scruple of maltreating the rabbits, the monkey, nor even the dog, when by accident or through affection they came in... I can't see that. They came in my way... But my disease grew upon me. My disease. Alcohol is a disease. Uh, the writer regrets his own drinking. He has bad memories of alcohol. But he says the death of his wife actually cured him of it. He drank, he, say, he said, to um, overcome his wife's illness. What disease is like alcohol? And at length, even Pluto, who is now becoming old and consequently somewhat peevish, even Pluto began to experience the effect of my ill temper. One night returning home, much intoxicated from one of my haunts about town, I fancied that the cat avoided my presence. I seized him, when in this fright of my violence he inflicted a slight wound upon my hand with his teeth. The fury of a demon, a demon instantly possessed me. I knew myself no longer. My original soul seemed at once to take its flight from my body. No more than fiendish malevolence. Gin nurtured, thrilled every fibre of my frame. I took from my waistcoat pocket a penknife, opened it, grasped the poor beast, by the throat and deliberately cut out one of his eyes from the socket. I blush, I burn, I shudder while I pen the damnable atrocity. Again, what's this technique? A repetition with a slight change, remember? Begins with P, parallel. Yes. 
exactly this time. Parallelism um, reflects the depth of feeling, depth of regret. I'm embarrassed. It's a torturous memory and I tremble with embarrassment. It thrills my little, my, it thrilled every fiber of my frame. So he is overcome. He's lost control. Alcohol. Almost be read as a warning against drinking. Alcohol um, makes him violent. Him uncontrollably violent. Possessed, basically. Doesn't he say he's possessed? Yes. Demonic. He's calling himself a devil, isn't he? He says he's a uh, uh, he's he's a uh, devilish. Diabolical behavior. He's behaving diabolically because of drink. The fury of a demon instantly possessed me. He isn't in control of himself. So that's the first of three scenes that we have to read today. So let's quickly go back over to the PowerPoint and remind ourselves of how Edgar Allan Poe wrote. Um, he decides on the length. He has to be read in, he has to, he wants to compose something that can be read in one sitting, even though we're reading it in two. Uh, then he decides what effect I'm to have on the reader. Well, perhaps regret, perhaps he wants to talk to people about the horrors of alcohol. Um, perhaps he wants to um, uh, appall people about the violence associated with it. Uh, he then he chooses a structural device. I'm going to focus on that parallelism and the use of hyphens. He uses it often. And which character should deliver it? Well, in this case, the narrator, because the, the narrator has mixed feelings and lots of hesitation in his, uh, because of the memory. Um, so we are identifying examples of the narrator's insanity. And this is the question that we're writing, we're answering today. How does Poe present the narrator's insanity? And show you two models and then leave you to it so let's go back to the, let's go back to the text uh, so exit powerpoint and find the right word so when reason returned in the morning when i had slept off the fumes of the night's debauch i experienced a sentiment half of horror half of remorse that parallelism again for the crime of which I had been guilty, but it was at best a feeble and equivocal feeling, basically a mixed feeling, and the soul remained untouched. I again plunged into excess, basically drink, and soon drowned in wine all memory of the deed. Again, this is reflecting Poe's own life. In the meantime, the cat slowly recovered. The socket of the lost eye presented his true a frightful appearance, but he no longer appeared to suffer any pain. He went about the house as usual, but as might be expected, fled in extreme terror at my approach. I had so much of my old heart left as to be at first grieved by this evident dislike on the part of a creature who, which had once so loved me. But this feeling soon gave place to irritation, and then came as if to my final and irrevocable overthrow, the spirit of perverseness of this spirit philosophy takes no account, yet I am not more sure that my soul lives than I am that perverseness is one of the primitive impulses of the human heart, one of the indivisible primary faculties or sentiments. Perverseness means being wicked, doing wicked things, which give direction to the character of man who has not a hundred times found himself committing a vile or silly action. Vile means appalling. For no other, uh, no other reason than because he knows he should not, have we not a perpetual inclination in the teeth of our best judgment to violate that which is law merely because we understand it to be such? The spirit of perverseness, I say, came to my final overthrow. It was this unfathomable longing of the soul to vex itself, to offer violence to its own nature, to do wrong. So 
he says that man wants to do wrong. It's we are inherently violent. We have violent souls. For the wrong sake only, that urged me to continue and finally to consummate the injury I had inflicted upon the unoffending brute. One morning in cold blood, I slipped a noose about its neck and hung it to the limb of a tree, hung it with the tears streaming from my eyes and with the bitterness remorse at my heart. Remorse means uh, regret. Hung be it because I knew that it loved me, and because I felt it had given me no reason of offense. Hung it because I knew that in so doing I was committing a sin, a deadly sin that would so jeopardize my immortal soul uh, as to place it, if such a thing were possible, even beyond the reach of the infinite mercy of the most merciful and most terrible God. What a huge sentence. But what we need to recognize is that the parallelism is underlining that depth of feeling So the parallelism lesson reflects how the narrator is really underlying, underlining how evil he is. We have violence in our nature. We want to do wrong. The soul wants to hurt itself. Um, so it's showing the parallelism reflects how deeply it feels about self-destruction. Of destructive acts, basically. We do things, we want to do things that harm ourselves and harm our souls. This is a massive sentence, it's very uncomfortable to read and read out, but he uses a lot of caesura, these um, hyphens. So the caesura and the long sentence. Um, a, it's a long train of thought. Uncoordinated thoughts. It's an outpouring of thoughts with these, with these hesitating, with it, with hesitation and. saying and another thing and another thing he, he isn't they aren't structured sentence ends he's just adding thought upon thought because you could say he's insane focus on that idea of insanity um on the night of the day line 71 to on the night of the day on which this cruel deed was done i was aroused from sleep by the cry of fire the occurrence on my bed were in flames the whole house is blazing it was with great difficulty that my wife, a servant, and myself made our escape from the conflagration, which means fire. Do you remember I said that the night of the, um, when the cat is hung, the house burns down. This is what's happening now. The destruction was complete. My entire worldly wealth was swallowed up, and I resigned myself thenceforth, thenceforward to despair. I am above the weakness of seeking to establish the sequence of cause and effect between the disaster and the atrocity, but I am dealing with a chain of facts. And I wish not to leave even a possible link imperfect. On the day succeeding the fire, I visited the ruins. The walls, with one exception, had fallen in. This exception was found in a compartment wall, not very thick, which stood about the middle of the house, and against which had rested the head of my bed. The plastering had been there in great measure, resisted the action of the fire, a fire, a fact which I attributed to its having been recently spread. So this is the only wall standing. About this wall, a dense crowd were collected, and many persons seemed to be examining a particular portion of it with very minute and eager attention. What did I say, folks, had been written on the wall? What picture? The words strange, singular, and other similar expressions excited my curiosity. I approached and saw, as if graven in bas-relief upon the white surface. Bas-relief is a type of painting. The figure of a gigantic cat. The impression was given with inaccuracy, truly marvellous. There was a rope about the animal's neck. So he's hung the cat. Now there's a cat on the wall. 
an image of a cat, when I first beheld this apparition, for I could scarcely regard it as less, my wonder and my terror were extreme, but at length reflection came to my aid. The cat, I remember, had been hung in a garden adjacent to the house. Basically, he explains that the falling of other walls had compressed the victim of my cruelty into the substance of the freshly paint spread plaster of the lime of which with the flames and the ammonia from the carcass had then accomplished the portraiture as i saw it he tries to explain this vision with rational facts apparition isn't a word for a ghost so you could say he is beginning to feel haunted um you could say that the writer introduces a I, the idea of ghosts and haunting at the stage for your structure points. Um, the freshly spread plaster, the lime of which with the flames and the ammonia. So he's trying to explain it scientifically. Let's push on. Although I thus readily accounted for, to my reason, if not altogether to my conscience, for the startling fact just detailed, it did not the less fail to make a deep impression upon my fancy. For months I could not rid myself of the phantasm of the cat. And for months I could not rid myself of the phantasm of the cat. Um, I could not rid myself. Let's highlight this. This is a... He is going insane because he's... For months he is tortured, tormented, haunted. Haunted. Increasingly haunted. Phantasm of the cat. And during this period, there came back to my spirit a half sentiment that seemed but was not remorse. I went so far as to regret the loss of the animal and to look about me among the vile haunts which I now habitually frequented for another pet of the same species and of somewhat similar appearance with which to supply its place. So he's about to meet another cat in one of the vile haunts which I frequently frequented. Um... Vile haunts are these dingy pubs that he is drinking in. So is insanity linked to alcohol? Is his insanity linked to alcohol? Um, for another pet of the same species. So he's yeah here he's he's looking for a cat. And before I read the next section, I need to go back to PowerPoint for a break, really. So, um, we've looked at how Poe writes. Let's look at some, at how Poe presents the narrator's insanity. Um, Poe presents his narrator's insanity when he describes, he, the narrator, describes events that have terrified have destroyed. I, I've highlighted this because I want to look at this idea of being terrified and destroyed and the caesura. The parallelism underlines the range of fearful emotions the narrator links to the black cats. Um, or we could have uh, the caesura in his speech gives the narration a halting, distracting tone, which shows how the memory disrupts his regular thought patterns. Oh, Thomas, this is terrible. regular thought patterns okay so remember AO1 was making a point with the quotation AO2 was to analyze language and structure in blue so not right in blue but the AO2 was written in blue so Caesura shows disrupted thoughts alternatively I could say parallelism shows there's the cat's giving him this range of emotions. What's AO3, folks? This is where we refer to context. What do we know about Poe and his, um, and his, and what drinking did to his life? We could say this reflects how alcohol destroyed. Personal relationships. And filled him with regret, perhaps. No, let's just leave it there. Actually, it shows you've understood some link between what's on the page and what was behind the man. So 
if I could share that with you. This reflects how alcohol helped destroy post personal relationships. So we have AO1 in black, AO2 in blue, AO3 in red. That gives us the, 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 that gives us an opinion and relevant examples, an anal analysis of the language and the, the, the context in which, within which the word was written. Well, I'm going to have to finish this next week, I'm afraid, folks, because I've kept you for 40 minutes and you need to get on with some work. So over to you. If you could use what we've written so far to answer this question, how does Poe present the narrator's insanity? I've given you an example of how I've worked up a PEE. Uh, next week, we will finish the story and we'll have a go at writing like Edgar Allan Poe. Um, so could you list three examples of how the narrator's gesticulation conveys the writer's insanity? So, yeah, how has the man behaved so far? And how does that show he's insane? It might help you with your PEE. Remember, we can talk about this tomorrow, uh, Tuesday morning at the Learning Clinic, if you care to join me for a chat. If I don't see you then, I will chat to you next week. Cheers.